Let's consider this situation. Two cars are moving towards the finish line. The first car is moving at the speed of 60 km an hour, whereas the second car is moving at the speed of 90 km an hour. From this statement, we can make two predictions. The first prediction. We know that the second car will arrive at the finish line first if both of these cars started from the same point. The second prediction. We can estimate how much time is needed for both of these cars to arrive at the finish line if we know how much distance is needed to be covered by both of these cars. So why am I talking about cars? Remember that this is a chemistry channel. Well, the situation that I just talked about have something in common with the concept that we use in chemistry. This concept is called rate of reaction. In this video, we are going to look further into this concept. Come on, let's have a look. Hey everyone, welcome to Siri Pencara Kimia Awa. In this video, we are going to explore the concept called rate of reaction. So, let's get into it, shall we? Let's start by looking at what rate of reaction is. Rate of reaction is the change in concentration of reactants or products over a period of time. This means that we can measure the rate of reaction by observing the change in concentration of reactants or products. The term concentration here represents molarity. However, in some cases, the rate of reaction can also be determined by observing the pressure of gases if the reaction is done in gas phase. In other words, rate of reaction is the speed of how fast or how slow a reactant is used up or a product is formed in a reaction. Let's consider a hypothetical reaction. This is a reaction where A reacts to form B. The following shows the change in concentration of reactant A. As time elapses, the concentration of A decreases until all of the reactants are used up. By measuring the gradient of this curve, we can determine the rate of reaction. Additionally, if we were to observe the change in concentration of B, which is the product, the concentration of B will increase until it reaches a maximum amount, where the reaction stops. Let's have a look at how we can calculate the rate of reaction by using this graph. For the sake of simplicity, we are going to look at the change in the concentration of A only. There are two methods that we can use to calculate the rate of reaction. The first method is done by calculating the gradient of the curve at any given point. A straight line is drawn on the tangent of the curve represented by orange dash lines here. The rate of reaction calculated here is called instantaneous rate of reaction. The second method is done by calculating the gradient of the curve between two points as represented by the green dashed lines. The rate of reaction calculated this way is called the average rate of reaction. Let's have a look at this example. Reactant A reacts to produce B. The following shows the concentration of A recorded as the reaction progresses. We can use this data to plot a graph of concentration of A against time. Now, let's calculate the instantaneous rate of reaction. For this example, we are going to calculate the instantaneous rate of reaction at t equals to 150 seconds. 
step 1, write down the formula of instantaneous rate of reaction. As we can see, the formula for instantaneous rate of reaction is equals to negative delta A over delta T. Step 2. Draw a vertical line at T equals to 150 seconds. Draw this line all the way up until it touches the curve at one point. Step 3. Draw a line that touches the curve at only one point. This line is called tangent of the curve. Step 4. Make a triangle out of this tangent. The difference in concentration is labeled as delta A, whereas the difference in time is labeled as delta T. Step 5. Label the vertices that corresponds to the concentration and time. The final step, we plug in these values into the formula and we calculate these values in order to get the final answer. For this example, the instantaneous rate of reaction at t equals to 150 seconds is 2.208 times 10 to the minus 5 molar per second. Please note that the value of rate of reaction is always positive. Using the same graph, let's calculate the average rate of reaction between t equals to 100 second and t equals to 200 second. The first step, write the formula for the average rate of reaction. As we can see, the average rate of reaction between t equals to 100 seconds and t equals to 200 seconds is equals to negative delta A over delta T. The second step, draw two vertical lines that touches the curve at t equals to 100 seconds and t equals to 200 seconds. The third step, connect these two lines by drawing a straight line in between them. The fourth step, make a triangle out of this line. The difference in concentration of A is labeled delta A, whereas the difference in time is labeled as delta T. The fifth step, label each vertices with corresponding concentration and time. The final step, plug in these values into the formula and calculate. So, the average rate of reaction between t equals to 100 second and t equals to 200 second is 2.4 times 10 to the minus 5 molar per second. The average rate of reaction can also be calculated without plotting the graph. For the same reaction, we can calculate using the values in the table straight away. Let's calculate the average rate of reaction between t equals to 100 seconds and t equals to 200 seconds. We are going to use the same formula, which is average rate of reaction equals to negative delta A over delta T. Negative delta A over delta T is equivalent to negative A1 minus A2 over T1 minus T2. This is A1 at T1, whereas this is A2 at T2. We can plug these values into this formula and we can calculate this. As a result, we can get the average rate of reaction, which is 2.5 times 10 to the minus 5 molar per second. So, in a nutshell, the rate of reaction can be calculated if we have a set of data. And from this set of data, we can plot a graph from which we can determine the instantaneous rate of reaction and 
the average rate of reaction. To do this, we have to measure the gradient of the curve that we plotted. So I hope you find this video beneficial for you. And if you do, please give this video a like and share this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. That's all from me, Mr. Aslan, signing out. Bye!